as you've no doubt noticed, a transportable table space migration gives you a lot to think about. So let's organize those thoughts with a checklist of some good things to keep track of before and heading into your migration to help you make it as successful as possible. First of all, think about your target database and what you're going to do to make it match as closely as possible the source data that you're bringing in. When you create that target database, non-CDB or PDB, it has to have the identical character set to your source. Because remember, we're not modifying the data inside the data file. So the data has to be the same character set, source and target. That's both the database character set and the national character set. The compatible setting on your new database has to be at or above the source database. You can't transport data that has, say, compatible 19C into a database that's compatible 12.1 because that compatible will govern whether some of those features in the data files will be understandable by the database. So we simply won't allow you to do the wrong thing there. The time zone should match source and target. Now, there are a few cases, such as with full transportable table space, where we can actually update the time zone when you go to a newer time zone in the target. But best practice, have your database time zone and time zone file version match source and target. It'll give you the least amount of problems. When you're performing your backup and recovery and dealing with incremental backups. It's best to have block change tracking enabled on the source database. The reason for that is simply performance. With block change tra tracking enabled, we will know exactly which blocks changed in that source database between the level zero and the level one backup. So we don't have to scan the whole database to find changed blocks as of a specific SCM. It makes your increments go that much faster and reduces the downtime. When you're doing the conversion of incremental backups or whether it's your level zero backup or your level one backups, generally it makes sense to do that conversion on the target system because your, your new target hardware is generally much faster than your old server. I mean, that's often why you're migrating in the first place, right? Use the Perl scripts where possible to do the conversion. Take advantage of the automation that the scripts provide because more automation means less human error. Of course, doing that does require the Enterprise Edition on-premises or ex Enterprise Edition extreme performance in the cloud or being on Exadata. Now, when it comes to TDE, unfortunately, TDE encrypted databases are not supported by the Perl scripts. You can only transport TDE encrypted data files cross-platform on the same endianness anyway. You cannot transport an encrypted data file cross endian If you have encrypted data files, in that case, you're going to use regular data pump, which can handle that uh, decryption and encryption of your data. The Perl scripts that we've mentioned are in this uh, MOS note. Easiest way to look at look for it is with that V4 in the beginning, because there are different versions of this note for different source and target versions of transportable table space destinations. So for the V4, the most recent version of those Perl scripts, your source database has to be 10.2.0.3 or newer. Your target has to be 11.2.0.4 and newer. So some general best practices. Best practice is to practice, yes. Practice, practice, practice. Don't make the first time you use this technique be your go live window when you have to hit that minimal downtime. Make sure you've tested it, that you know what you're doing. This is not just a drag and drop kind of operation. I think that's pretty clear from the videos you've seen, from the explanations from Daniel and so on. It can be a little complicated. So start with a small database, prove it works in test, and then ramp your size up to a production size database, maybe even with a workload generator so that those incremental backups are meaningful. Automate as much as possible. If you can use those Perl scripts, do that. If there are other things that you can automate, such as your application shutdown startup, the disconnection of users and so on, do that as well. The more automation, the less opportunity for human error. Of course, save all of the logs 
and output from these operations. There are a lot of moving parts here, right? There's data pump, there's RMAN, you're doing incremental backups, you're doing roll forward recovery. You want to have all those logs so that you can look at what happened. And if there is an error, then it will be helpful in diagnosing it and getting support. And then have a cleanup procedure, whether you're have that in case of a failure for rollback or to ver validate your target on the uh, end result or to repeat the tests. You want to have a cleanup procedure so that you don't have to just re-image your entire system every time you want to go through this practice. And finally, do make sure that your source database is offline when you're complete in your go live environment. Because what you really don't want to have happen is you go through all this work, have your minimal downtime migration, and then find out that some of your users are still using the old database. And now you've got a you know betwixt and between situation where some users are on the new and some are on the old. So take that old database offline. 